Okay, so you're back from a, we're back, but you're back from a whirlwind trip to, to Paris. Paris. Yeah, so I got <coughs> plenty of pissed at French people in general, but the food is awesome. Yeah. Oh my God, I miss that. Were you as in? much as I love Holland, man, they don't, they just, the food here is yeah. bland, let's be ni nice. Yeah. Um, oh my God, they were so good. Were you in like Paris, Paris? Yeah, like, like where I grew city. up, the okay. Latin Quarter. No shit. I grew up in a six arrondissement right near, you know the saint Sulpice Church? In uh, the, da the Da Vinci Code, uh -huh. right, that's where I grew up. I grew up 50 meters from that church. No literally. shit. Yeah, Rue des Canettes, which is a street that goes there, so 50 meters from there. Okay. So, yeah. Quick train trip. Three hours. <laughs> Not cool with that, yeah. She had never tasted real food in her life. Co <laughs> Coffee Girl is over there for everybody to know. She had never tasted real food, so I was like, okay. So I needed a break anyway, so I was like, all right. <laughs> and so she had the best croissant ever. She was ruined though with yeah. food. Like now she's like, oh. <laughs> it was oh, it was so good. Like man, can they, they can make food fuckers. Yeah, now the crepes, <laughs> the thing. The, oh. How are they not a fat population? Isn't that funny? Isn't it crazy? With because even me, I was like, it would be hard to stay off certain things. Is it Paris. just self control? Is that it? Oh, like and it can't food be quality? just that because the, the bread alone, you're like, oh. Yeah. So, by the way, I didn't know, but I grew up with the daughter of a guy who created a bakery called Mulo okay. that has world famous macaroons. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you take one bite and you're like, you're like, well, I just get to be overweight. I now. Didn't, no, no, but I didn't even <laughs> know. Like, you grew up and you go, like, so every time she brought yeah. bakery to the school, we we're like, oh, yeah, they're good. And then the parents always jumped on it. We we're like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's, wh why are you so excited? Now I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so it was, it was good. Now, this trip did come at a little bit of a cost. Yeah, because it was French people there. <laughs> oh, I'm talking to me. Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Julia messages me, guys. Like, right. Probably, it was literally Monday night. I had a doubt. So, so doubt so, crept into my mind on Monday. I have, I'm packing yes. Monday night. And, and it's like Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon, I was going to come here. Get settled in, and then we we're going to podcast yesterday and today. I have forgotten that part. So I get a message from Julian like, hey, uh, I, I think I fucked up. <laughs> yes. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, Are, you're coming tomorrow? I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, well, I'm leaving today. <laughs> yeah. and but we'll I'll see back. you on the Thursday we'll morning. Back. We'll yeah. be back. We can do it Thursday, Friday. I was like, all right, we can make that work. There you go. So it worked out good. I'd, Coffee girl. There's worse places to burn a, to burn a day than when it's Coffee girl. super warm in, uh, in Utrecht. Because we have the same time. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll explain that on, on the later episode. Okay. Episode. So we wanted to dive in today a couple episodes ago. I think the, it was two Can I ago. make a statement first? Yes. So we had our first uh, Strong Feed session at HQ last Saturday. Yes. Right oh, there. shit. Was, I have, we haven't even talked about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Often. So, well, actually, we should announce it. Like, so twice a month, we're going to do a real Strong Feed session at HQ. Okay. By invitation, we'll invite 10 to 12 people, and you get to come and die with us. Yeah. So we started this Saturday. It was cool. Like, people found themselves, and it was a real cool place. And yeah. so one of the conditions for coming was you had to, bro to bring uh, Star Wars pops. Because people say, I thought you would want the uh, Dragon Ball. Yeah. Like, yeah, because I have all of them. Yeah, already. Got them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I didn't ask. <laughs> Duh. Um, so, or you bring coffee beans, or you bring chocolate. And so, all the guy from Belgium brought good chocolate, coffee beans. It was great. And then the dude brought like a very, very uh, good brand of whiskey. It was a uh, Game of Thrones li limited edition. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't have it. Because Richard went, oh my god, I'm almost crying, and then bottle is gone. Oh, really? Richard did not train on Saturday. <coughs> so I was like, you're coaching, but you're not training. And then you grab and the you bottle the whiskey. of whiskey. I'm like, huh, we need to talk about this. <laughs> there will be rules as to who gets what. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> so uh, the, I, there wasn't vomit or blood out front when I got they here. They pushed, today, like so. two of them like yeah. died by then. It was cool. Like I spent a little bit more time coaching than I wanted. So they'll have to get used to put more weight on the stuff and start yeah. dying sooner. Because yeah. this is not, by the way, so people know, this is not a seminar, this is a training session, my yeah. training session, that you get to crash and you get to train with me. Yeah. But I'm not coaching you. Yeah, you don't get to drag. No, drag no, 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 no. Yeah. So like, I'm going to do a little bit of coaching, but not that much. I'm there to train yeah. myself. You get to join, but that's the point. Yeah. Like, right, so I had guys were starting to warm up with a farmer's walk with no weight on it. I was like, what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> put some weight, go die. and. 
So we'll get into our groove of things. Yeah. There. But if I have to coach you, you're out. <laughs> you come to die, not for me to coach you. That's not the point. Like when I'm training, I'm, I am not a nice guy when I'm training. And I notice we are full up on coffee right Fuck now yeah. too. No, so no, no. That's, that's the cheap stuff that I'm going to let the people for the workshop have. Oh, okay. The good stuff is in the, is in the cupboard. <laughs> oh, they bought us some good coffee, man. Yeah. Someone bought us a beer. Like a, um, they only make 1,500 liters. So it's like a private brewery. Oh, and really? She brought me beer from the guys. Yeah, they had a home. Nice. You have to come home to drink it because I'm not you're, living in you're, here. You're assuming that I didn't drink it when I stayed there last <laughs> no, that, night. <laughs> that is true. Those blue ones, <laughs> those blue cans, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. But then that's pretty good. Yeah. It's like, yeah, whatever, I'll drink it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. But it's there. Actually, it's funny. This is a total sidetrack, but we, you talked about the coffee beans. My, This is one of my favorite language barrier little, little sayings here. My friend Toby in Vienna. He has referred to it a couple of times with which I didn't I didn't even know what he was saying. Because he was like, yeah, so I take the thing and then you take the, the, the coffee bones out. And he kept referring to it as bones. And I was that like, I kind I of like, like it. I was like, yeah. I was like, I don't, I, and I didn't, I just didn't yeah. get it. Yeah. And then as I would hear it a few more times over a couple of months, I was like, oh, he means coffee beans. But I hadn't had the heart to because coffee bones sounds good it sounds really fucking awesome, i know like, i kind of like it so now my wife coffee has started bones, just yeah. randomly hashtagging all of her photos coffee bones. like hashtag coffee bones and uh that's a good one it's, it's like victoria one. when she said um she was in the car she was getting sick and she says uh, i have emotion sickness emotion sickness <laughs> those are good sayings it's like good. we should steal it's them good. like coffee bones i like it so we're making it hashtag a thing. coffee bones hashtag coffee bones <laughs> there we go it's a strong fit thing yes so, uh, anyways, a, yeah. few, a few episodes back, this I think would be two episodes ago, uh, Richard joined us and we talked kind of in depth about the subject of Master, mastery yeah. and in his background from it. And we, we want to get into kind of like, a, what, what would you call it, like a rule in which things are either mastery or fucking average, your extremes yeah. and, your, and your centers. For yeah, 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 because... Um, so we've been talking uh, mastery about the, to the mentoring program as well, right? And there was there's something that struck me. Uh, and so <clears throat> I was starting to ask a very simple question to the mentoring program to see the answers. And it was fascinating to me. So I was talking about the ramen head uh, chef, mm -hmm. right? Normally all of you have seen it by now, but he works with uh, the dude who climbed like El Capitan solo, right? Uh, what's his name? Alex Honnold? 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 Whatever it is, yeah. right? And I was asking about the ramen head chef. Um, the guy's mentoring program, is he an extreme or is he in the center? What was I referring to? I was referring to this, the Pareto distribution, right? the 80-20 rule, where everything in life seems to obey the bell curve, where most things happen in the center, and then you have the extremes where very little happens. Mm -hmm. It seems to be most things in life. Population in, in town, mostly at the center, a few extremes on both sides. Uh, that it's called Pareto because of the Italian uh, economist, which basically was stating that mo uh, most of the wealth is in the very number of people. There's very, very rich, but if you even look at it the other way, there's very, very rich, very, very poor, and then the most Everybody people are in the middle, yeah. right? So there's basically, that, that actually goes into the Schrodinger, in a way, what is life, finality versus causality, where life looks for order, and order is found in the center. The extremes represent disorder, yeah. right? It's not that it's hard. Not sustained, it's chaos it's a not little bit. It's chaotic, yeah. it's not sustainable. You cannot judge anything based on your extremes. Mm -hmm. And if you look for them, you are looking f not for order, not for life, you're looking for death, yeah. which is what we see a lot, right? So mm -hmm. if you look at a Pareto distribution, to me, it's an explanation of life, where order happens in the center, and this is where most things happen, and the extremes are, that chaotic, disorderly, looking for death sometimes kind of thing that shows where we can go, yeah. but they are not sustainable, yeah. right? And that's what to me the Pareto distribution is. It shows you how life works yeah. and it seems to obey everything in life, right? Yeah. And so to me, that was, that's a very important concept. So the ramen heads do that. Yes. Then. So my right. question what, to what everybody- What was the feedback? Yeah, yeah. My question was, is he at the extreme or is he in the center? And everybody but Greg said, is he at the extreme? And I was like, all right. So when I, first of all, is like when I ask the question, is he at the extreme? First thing you should ask is, is he at the extreme compared to me or compared yeah. to himself? When I asked the questions, I was referring to himself. Okay. To him, is he an extreme person or in the center? And everybody said, but Greg, everybody said he's in the extreme. Why? Because he's in an extreme compared to everybody else. Yeah, to what we see. What we it's see. It's an amount but, of everything. It's exactly. far beyond what we can. But what does he do? He does 
every day the same thing mm -hmm. over and over and over again, literally seven hours a day, six days a week and everything, getting marginally better, with, every incrementally better. With massive amounts of control. You exactly. know what I mean? Like, so, there's, there's not chaos. There's no chaos, there's no leeway. Yeah, it would be if we had to. But it would, exactly, it's, because it's your experience. Yes, exactly. Right? So, but to him, if you look, he's in his own center. Mm -hmm. It's just his center happens to be at everybody else's extreme. Is that where then when we talk about mastery, where is it, yes. it's really a matter of moving your average forward? Moving your is. center to yeah. what is somebody else's yeah. extreme. Maybe to what, I think mastery is moving your center to what used to be an extreme for you. Yeah. So we go to an extreme, we see how it feels, and mastery of that is mm -hmm. taking your center and moving it to that extreme, and to what used to, to be an extreme. And being able to perform here without the chaos and risk that's normally And the inconsistency yeah. and everything. And so the problem I see is that people look for extremes all the time. They mm -hmm. think that mastery doing better at anything is pushing the extreme further, Yeah. right? If I can do more intensity or more this or more that, I'll be able to get better. But that's not, actually that's where I think most of the mistakes happen is no, 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 no. You don't, mastery is not pushing the extremes further. Mm -hmm. It's pushing your center toward what was an extreme before. And if you get your center there, then, then you have mastery. Example, uh, Tom Platz, I actually talked to him on the phone one day, and he said, and I asked him. Did he say anything about me? No. Oh, fuck. No. All right, yeah, maybe next it was time. Maybe it was <laughs> but it does, I know it does like you. But, um, and I asked him the question, did you really do the two sets of 315 bass squat for 50 reps. So let me repeat this. I didn't say 15, I said 50, 5 zero. He did a set of 50 reps, 5 zero at 315, took five minute break, did it again. Like, uh, uh, nope.com. <laughs> Judy Marco was telling me about that one. That's crazy. And uh, so I asked him, is that true? And he said, yeah, I only did it once in my life. Yeah. And I'll never redo it. Lesson learned. But I did it. Right. So, that even for him is extreme. But let's do two sets of 30 for Tom Platz on the back squat would be close to his center. Mm -hmm. Right, what about everybody else? What happens if yeah. I take someone strong and I make him do two sets of 30? He's gonna end up in a hospital. Yeah. If he doesn't die yeah. during the second set, during the first set, You're fuck it. Yeah. I don't think at my best I could have done two sets. I, there's no fucking way. Anyway, so that, was not an extreme for two sets of 30 is an extreme for top plats at his best. That would be closer to his center, but to everybody else, you would kill them. So the point is not that to condition basically to have a better cardio system that allows you to go from 220 to 315 and do two sets of 30 because you'll end up in a hospital because mm -hmm. you'll destroy, talk about rhabdo, you'll just murder yourself. That's not what performance is. That's why I think people get it wrong. They think that's what performance is. It's like you have to be tough enough mentally and the, the capacity to, sets of third, to do two sets of 30 reps at, at 315. No, that's not yeah. true at all. It's just Tom Platz had moved his center to the point that he could do 315 for 30 reps for two sets and be like, yeah, good well, training and I, session. And I think too it takes, in, in my opinion, I would say it also takes slowly from the center, moving your center forward while just Every once in a while, just get out and find. It. Just get out and find your edge. Find your edge. Be like, all right, man, fuck. Let me fuck. go. Let me go there. And now I know yeah. that that's my edge. Exactly. And then at some point, and and everybody I know who has these, mo they have these moments when their training starts to go well over the course of like, mm -hmm. a long period of time, yeah. where you come across these moments where there's maybe a weight or an exercise or a rep scheme that fucking was a big deal for you to hit it yeah. once. A year ago, exactly, and now it's warm up shit. You yeah, know, that's a moment where you're you're like, oh, like yeah. now I've done it, and that doesn't come from almost getting stapled under that weight many times. It's like you, you know when you when I realized I moved my center. Me was that is I did a poor squat with four hundred. Uh, it was four or five and no belt, and I come down. I'm one, two, three, and I just went boom. Yeah. Then I did a triple. I had no respect for the weight. Yeah, but even at the bottom, no belt, nothing. Mm -hmm. it, it, I didn't feel the weight. Yeah. And I had no respect for that weight. And I was like, fuck. Yeah. That, a poor squat at 400 used to be fucking heavy. Yeah. And I had no respect for the weight. Yeah. I was like, nah, that's just nothing. And then that's basically, two weeks later, I did 500, which I still think is my best lift ever, because I'm not good at it. It was a 500 poor squat without a belt, like a one French seconds. Yeah. Why? Because they're lazy, <laughs> so they take forever. One, two, three, and then, and at 500 pounds, that to me is my greatest static lift because uh, God knows I can't, uh, I'm not good at heavy static. Yeah. But that to me was like, ah, 
that's all the work that I put in. There it is. Yeah. It wasn't the 550 that I squatted. Yeah. It was those things. That was that to me told me like I'd move my center. And I think too, like when you get on the performance side of things too, like I remember even in some competitions where like a guy comes out, <laughs> you know, and would hit, I mean, there's many examples, but let's just say something like uh, a press medley or something, yeah. you know, and a guy comes out in front of me, I remember this guy's way bigger than me yeah. and way stronger and old, like old man strong and yeah. fucking 400 pounds, you know, you're just like, fuck <laughs> yeah. me. So you he know? can move weight. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, son of a bitch. And, yeah. and guy comes out and is just rips through everything. Smoked everybody, yep. and I'm next. And so, but but the nice thing is, is what what that is is that's just a gift, because now I know exactly what I have to do. Yeah, it's not about yes. it's not about maybe hitting, hopefully just getting each rep up because that's not yeah. going to win it. Yeah. So what I have to do now is find that edge. Yep. It's like I, you have to be so close you see to this line of chaos in which you're either going to hit it all and beat the time. Or you're going to fall apart, but who fucking cares at that point? But that's because that's a competition. That's exactly. an extreme. Exactly, and that's But that's not different. where the work is. Correct. So that's a test. Because I never did <laughs> press medleys like that. Ever. Yeah, all right. That so, was a pace that I was not even comfortable with. And you know. that was borderline dangerous. All right. Of so course, yeah. yeah that's yeah. your extreme, right? Because yeah. it's competition time, and then you go there. But that's not what the work is. And I think people try, like the idea of pushing the extremes because, in a way, it's much easier. You know, you go fucking no, nuts. Yeah. You go, yeah. you go like this. You go yeah. fucking nuts, and then you produce that. But the problem is that's not mastery. Mm -hmm. That's chaos. That's yeah. disorder. That's death. So you're looking for for death because it's much easier to destroy something mm -hmm. than it is to build it. Like that one rep test. In a, in a sense, to me, it's mentally it's easy because you go fucking crazy. That's all you got to do. Yeah. But you destroy yourself, right? Yeah. That's not what the work is. The work is. It's all those seconds of quality work put together that, again, don't come into a highlight reel yeah. that you don't get to put on Facebook or anything. Yeah. But that's where your, because that's where your center is. And it's moving that fucking center that takes so much work and so much preciseness yeah. and passion. And, and, but I think if you can understand that, your training will be so much better because then also you won't put that much pressure onto yourself to get a PR every session, to yeah. get like, because like right now I'm asking everybody to find their hammies and they go like, why didn't cramp? I'm like, did you make progress? Yeah. Yes, all right. So that means, guess what? You just push your center slightly toward mm -hmm. where I want it to be. Yeah, it's not where we want, but because it fucking takes time anyway. So yeah. I, I used that, I, that changed my way of coaching in a way because the other day I had Kyla, coffee girl, right? And we go through the hammies and I can tell she found them at a little bit and I can tell on her face that she did not like the experience mm -hmm. at all. We'll have a coffee girl on the podcast tomorrow so we can talk a little bit about that. But the second she, f she did not like it. And that's when I had the conversation. I was not necessarily nice about it, but I was like, all right. So not you. <laughs> <laughs> it happens sometimes that, you know, it gets the best of me. And uh, she's laughing. And um, I was like, okay, so what do you want? Do you want the taste of defeat again? I can give you honey. Or are you gonna go and fucking find them? It's yeah. like, but the, the reason I did that is because I wanted to push her to an extreme so she could find it, but I was never going to m maintain that kind of thing on every training session. So mm -hmm. that one time I was like, look, you can leave out of here, uh, failing on this right now if you want, or are you gonna fucking find it? I, because I explained to her beforehand that the second she touches the hammy, she will back off. Yeah. She'll go into flight, she'll go into freeze. I'm like, then don't, don't let it happen. So we had an entire conversation about that that's a bit more advanced but i was like no you can't let the hamis take you away from the fight so we had, so so she did and basically we did it for basically an hour she, not happy with me at all but i was like okay so now we found an extreme because eventually she found the cramp i was like so i would never do that session 10 times in a row not even twice in a row yeah because mentally it was extremely taxing to her because i was an extreme but i was like all right so now you, but now you know what it's like to feel your hamis all right now we're going to take your center and very slowly push it toward that. So that means far more in a nicer way. Mm -hmm. Well, so now we do two sets. I'm like, did you feel your hammies a bit more? But yeah, yeah, they kind of cramped. All right. Yeah. All right. Because now it's not about fun, the extreme anymore. It's about moving your center toward that. And so it will be one step at a time. Yeah. So the win is maybe finding the hammies a little bit higher than yesterday, right? They, they cramp a little bit more. They cramp a little bit higher. Better engagement. It requires less work to get there. Those are, that's progress. And that's what I'm going to need 
every single fucking day mm -hmm. until we get to what was an extreme before. But that's where people will quit as well. They'll do it one week and they go, I don't feel, I don't feel enough. So they're going to switch exercises. They're going to go, uh, can you give me a trick for that? There is yeah, no that's trick. The, that's the yo-yo thing with everything we see in fitness, yeah. with nutrition, everything. Choose. I'll, I'll do a little bit and then I just don't And then want. they switch. Yeah, it's not and everything, yeah. And because I, but that's because that's where the work is. Yeah. The work is that. It's the no work goal. is in the middle. And you, yes, it's pushing your center. And yes, it's not fancy. And yeah, it's work. And then I'm sure at sometimes you're going to find it boring. But honestly, it's not boring enough. Otherwise, you'd be angry enough to find your hammies. So what about somebody who I was talking with a mentoring, one of the coaches from a mentoring mm -hmm. program today. Um, and he wanted just some advice on, he, he said, you know, squatting was his, like heavy squats is the one thing he's just can't get his, can't mind, get yeah. his mind under, right? Mm -hmm. And and I believe in that case, um, it's 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 the heaviness of it, not the squat. This is a coach yeah. who knows what he's doing. Yeah. Yes. Um, meaning meaning I'm like, well, you're, it's not going to get more comfortable. You're, you're not going to squat 300 pounds really well, and then yes, and, and then do it really yeah. well. Well, I mean, you're not going to do that really well, really often, and then just all of a sudden squat 500 pounds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you do have to get to that edge. And so, you know, what I told him was like, well, your issue is not the work. It's not the squat. It's not the mechanics of the squat. Yeah. It's not any of this. Your issue is that edge. Is the behavior. Which means then, so, so and this was, it did help me, and we, I think we had talked about it a little bit um, on an epi a couple episodes ago, but for me, it's a matter then of, of getting more comfortable with a, a heavy weight mm -hmm. means I can't, if, if I go from here where everything, nothing feels just all that heavy, yeah. you know, and then I want to have a session where I push, it kicks my ass because yeah. I'm so unfamiliar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, exactly. and, and, yeah. and I said, like, you just need to get to the point where you don't worry about the amount of weight you think you should be doing. It just, just, get you need to get like you're going so to fucking blow something up. Yeah. And then they, they test it. that. But, and okay, so if, for example, with him, I would be like, okay, so that means you're going to squat twice a week, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't care about that. But yeah. let's get twice a week and you're going to put, and you're going to do until it feels heavy, yeah. right? And you're going to basically master that. Mm -hmm. and so that means you're going to take the heavy weight, and I don't care what the heavy is, yeah. right? Maybe it's 250 or whatever. You just need to feel like you're in charge. Exactly. Yeah. And then once it's heavy on your back, it's going to start creating some thoughts of, mm -hmm. oh, my God. And then you're going to master that thought. Yeah. That's how you get better. Yeah. It's like get, a, get under the weight. That's why I did the post squats, because at the bottom, it was horrible. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to die yeah. with 315. But then... I was like, okay, then I'm going to stay one, two, three, until I could stay for basically almost a minute at the bottom mm -hmm. and pop right up. And then I would go, okay, so now I feel great at 315. Good, 335. Fuck, I'm going to die. Yeah. And then I would stay, and then I work weeks after weeks after weeks until I, I, and every time I felt the weight was okay, I move on to the next weight. Because yeah. it was fucking uncomfortable to be doing a poor squat with all the way up to 500 pounds. Yeah. But I was like, the second I mastered the weight in the sense of one, two, three, like not outcome based like yeah. how does it feel the yeah. second he felt like i got this all right more weight yeah and then so for me it was uh be uncomfortable with the weight on your back at the bottom for a long three seconds that yeah. was literally so by the way some days it means 330 some days it means 280 yeah but it didn't matter i was going to work that feeling at the bottom so i mastered myself yeah under the weight yeah and in that case that's what i would do yeah, and I went for just, you know, because I had very similar experience as his, is what I did was I was just like, all right, well, it doesn't have anything to do with the numbers now because it can't. Because uh, I would go in, I'd be like, I know I can squat this easily. Yeah. I've done it many times. But and boom, I unrack yeah. it and I'm like, motherfucker. Yeah, and so, exactly. And so, so, so I had to remove that and all I wanted yeah. to do was feel a squat that still, that, that felt heavy. Yeah but that it felt like I was imposing exactly. my will on the bar. And that, that's what you're going to work out yeah. because that's where your center needs to be, in yeah. that weight. And you do that until that weight feels like yeah. you're talking to a bar like you're my bitch right now. Yeah, exactly. And then you can put weight, but not before. Yeah. So it's nothing to and do then, with the and, weight. Yeah, exactly. And for, and, and, it's for, you. and for me, it was a matter of finding a way to be it, mentally, to just be on the attack. But I think that's I don't like receiving a bar and being exactly. like, okay, then we'll see how right, it feels. But you see, I think that's the difference between the center and the and the, sure. and the, the, the extreme is the extreme is about the outcome. It's about yes. the weight. Yeah. I need to deadlift 600. So that's yeah. the extreme. And then you go, if you I go crazy. You die trying to hit a number. Exactly. Yeah. If I go crazy, I can have 600. That's an extreme. That's outcome based. Yeah. The problem with the center is it's not about moving the bar anymore. It's about moving you. 
Mm -hmm. It's about getting under it and go like, where the real questions happen is they happen in the center. The extreme, you just go crazy. You're like, yeah, there's no personal involvement in the extreme because that's yeah. where death lives. Yeah. Life is in the center. That's where you are. And that's where mastery is, is mastering yourself first, right? And so suddenly it's about mastering how you feel under a heavy squat. Yeah, well, that's a whole less shiny and it's a whole lot more uncomfortable than yeah. going like, I got a PR. That's not how this works, right? So yeah. mastery is mastery of yourself first, is that. It's, but if you look at women heads, me, that's what I saw. I saw the guy saying, like, yeah, it's a fucking lot of work and it's the same thing and I'm going to do it to the to best possible. Like, imagine how much control of himself he has. Yeah. It's not just mastery of the, of the broth and the noodle, it's of himself first. And that's why, to me, it's so hard to move the center. Yeah. Because that's where the real work is. Because that's where you'll find yourself. So now a guy like that is obviously, like, like you said, it's, he's moved his center way out there, but mm -hmm. it is still very, very extreme for us. What, what can we do? Like, like what does a normal person even take okay. from where somebody's at? But that's the problem. Is if, so let's talk about the fitness industry. We can use, uh, I think we can use nutrition because it's something everybody can relate to. Mm -hmm. And it makes, it, it makes my point uh, <laughs> simpler than usual. <laughs> um, so for example, how does it work? We take bodybuilders, because by the way, we have to give them all the credits. They're the reason we know about nutrition. Since yeah. the 70s, they change everything. Everything we know about nutrition change because of them, because yeah. they're the one testing. But most of the time in the fitness industry, what we, what we do is we take the people that are at our extremes, right? Not their extremes, but our extremes. We look at what they do, and we're going to try to temper that down to sell it to the masses. Mm -hmm. And that's basically how this works. But by definition, you cannot temper down an extreme. It doesn't work like that. There's an entire behavior that comes with that, yeah. that you're not understanding. So let's take a practical example, because I always go fuck all somewhere. Yeah. Let's take Jay Cutler, three times Mr. Olympia, and the guy was not the one the quarterback, Jay Cutler. <laughs> no, not that guy. Um, no, not that guy. Uh, not the Denver Broncos. Uh, so he was either number one, number two for like 14 years in a row, yeah. or whatever the fuck he was, right? Yeah. All right, so if you take him and you go, okay, this is what he ate, 300 grams of protein a day, plus the rice, plus the fucking broccoli, and then yeah, and then you take that, and you're basically gonna go, okay, so that's what he does, so I'm gonna reduce that, but do the same thing yeah, for me. I'm gonna scale it down. I'm gonna scale it down. Yeah. I'm, so, but to you, the guy is a mother fucking extreme, mm -hmm. way past what you understand, Yeah. right? And you can't just temper down an extreme, it doesn't work like yeah. that, because that's not, he, it doesn't plus, work like that. even genetically, a guy First like a guy like Jay Cutler may just always be more efficient at training, recovery, nutrition, absorption, recovery. all of it than that's without than the drugs. Any, yeah, and even, even aside without the drugs, from the drugs, he was stronger than you at sixteen. You don't he was get stronger. to be the best at, in the world. At fourteen, he was probably stronger yeah. than you are right now. Uh, he was. He's a monster of work ethic. He's. Yeah, yeah I mean, like so. Because so many people work hard and have their shit dialed in. If you want to be really good, you also got to be, there's some of it that is, that, that's in you, you know? And, and, and that's the thing that we can, it's not a level playing field. If I no. see, oh, I'll just eat, he's 40% he's heavier than me, so I'll eat 60%. It's just not yeah. the fucking same. It doesn't work. And, but so, uh, and, and there's a number of things that people don't understand that go with it, like those guys. For example, let's talk about the fact that th their life, what their life is like, mm -hmm. right? So you can't, take what he eats and not take his behavior into account. Like you can't look at, at an athlete and go, that's what he does, but not looking at the behavior and their actual life, uh, thinking you can take their training system or their nutrition, but not their life habits. You can't do that. You can't separate the two and think, I'm just gonna take what he does. No, 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 then you have to take everything that he does yeah. and scale it down for you. But then of <coughs> course you can't do that either because you're not him, right? But so yes. they don't understand that the Jay Cutler, all he does is, Train, eat, rest, sleeps, eat, yeah. rest, train, yeah. rest, eat. Then he works a little bit on the side, but you're not that guy. Most of the pro athletes we know don't do shit all day. Correct. Yeah. They play their sports. That's the only time they're actually awake. The yeah. rest of the time, you're like, there are, like and there are just there are a few guys out there, and it's only really because they chose sports that don't have any money in them. You know, like strongman. Or yes, power exactly. Yeah. Some of those guys where you're looking at other than maybe the top few guys in strongman, a lot of those guys have full-time jobs. 
You know, it's insane. Ronnie Coleman was yeah. a cop yeah. his entire career. I don't know how he managed that. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know either. But most of the guys that I talked to, basically, where they were pro bodybuilders, maybe they're not the top, like a Ronnie Coleman was an mm -hmm. exception. Most of them did nothing all day. Dude, they were just smoking. The guys that I talked to, to three, they were smoking weed all day so they could eat just more. Veg out, eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah so they could yeah. veg out and eat. Yeah. Because you're like, that's how you grow muscle. Mm -hmm. It's like, so if that's not your life, don't take those the rules don't apply. Th those rules don't apply yeah, don't to you. Don't take that road. Don't take that road because yeah. you you can't take that road. Yeah. That road is close to you because you can't eat that way. You can't train that way because the rest of their life is not yours because they do nothing. If you have a normal life, chances are you can't do that. You're not them and you can't do it. So that presents a problem because now I get a lot of questions saying, what about 300 grams of protein a day? And I think there's a humongous lie as to how much food we need to eat. Mm -hmm. I think that's just, you don't need as much food as you think. You don't need the 300 grams of protein. You don't need the rice at every meal with the broccoli and everything. It's just not true. Like, for, first of all, neurologically speaking, like the mix of protein and carbs doesn't work. We mm -hmm. talked about it. But even the 300 grams, let, let's, let's talk about 300 grams of protein a day. What does that mean? You're going to eat three hours, because I hear that one all the time. You're going to eat three hours, whatever grams yeah. of protein. By the way, grams of protein means usually you can have to quadruple those grams to get the quantity of meat that you need to eat to get those grams of protein. So 300 grams a, a day of protein, that means a kilo of chicken or fish or meat or yeah. stuff like that a day. That's a shitload, by the way. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so that means that every three hours you're going to need that much protein. To eat protein, you need to be on the parasympathetic side of the autonomic nervous system, right? So that means that you're going to be in the parasympathetic side all day in order to uh, get that protein in and then basically all night to grow muscle. All right, so when are you in sympathetic? Do you think you're never going to go into the sympathetic side? Two things. First of all, you're mistaken. Yeah. <laughs> and um, second of all, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. You don't get to scratch, to stretch 300,000 years of evolution yeah. and not go sympathetic. Your body needs the sympathetic side for so many reasons I don't have the time to go into right now, but you need the sympathetic side and you will go there anyway because guess what? Life happens. Unless you smoke weed all day, stay home on your couch, do nothing else, you will go sympathetic. Mm -hmm. Even if you do that, chances are you'll go sympathetic because your body needs it. Yeah. But that's, an, that's another yeah, stuff. That, that's that's, what, that's when you flip out about something else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you get autoimmune disease. Anyway, yeah. that's another subject. But let's say it was feasible for you to have 300 grams of protein a day and, and start. You would basically end up in a parasympathetic state constantly. You will crush your system so hard mm -hmm. by doing that. It doesn't work. And, um, and second of all, the, the quantities, the protein and the, and the carbs are extremes, basically. That's not where most of the body lives. The body lives mostly on fats and stuff like that. That's another podcast that we'll go into. But that idea that you can be in a parasympathetic state all day is absurd. And if you have a normal life, that means you're going to go through sympathetic phases. And guess what? In that sympathetic phase, you can digest the protein anyway. So you're not getting 300 grams of protein a day. Yeah. You're not. You're just and chewing on 300 grams of protein. Exactly. Yeah. And you're not processing so now you fatigue everything, your mm -hmm. organs and everything. It doesn't work like that. And so those studies that were made saying like, okay, so you're gonna, uh, we're going to want to build muscle. Second question, when do you build muscle? When you're asleep. When you're asleep. We all know that and we all agree. Then what the fuck are you eating 300 grams of protein during the day for then? Yeah. It's not working. Those guys that do it, take so much drugs that their nervous system acts in a way that I don't even understand. Yeah. Like, because I have a guy who's taking steroids and he's asking me, what do I do? And I'm like, dude, and I have no problem against steroids. That's not my point here. Yeah. My point is, I don't know because I'm not testing it while being on steroids. Yeah. If I were on steroids, I could test it and tell you, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not, I don't take steroids, I don't know. So the protocol that I know uh, with the nervous system works on the typical nervous system. The second you take steroids, things change. Yeah. I'm not sure how. It seems to me that because of the amount of hormones, testosterone and everything, they are more in sympathetic all day. And there's such a variation in what someone can be doing. That's another part too. Where That's a like, different drug, you know right? I, mean? like, I don't know. It seems educated guess. What I, don't I would, know. What I would like to yeah. see, if anybody has a really good background on that stuff, Please bring it on, because I'm know. confused. Like, because I want to know the effects of steroids on nervous system. Anybody nervous has, system. Well, I know nutrition with the steroids, because yeah. I talked to enough guys to know yeah. about that, but I don't know what the nervous system, how it acts. My guess is you're on the sympathetic more. Yeah. So does that mean we should lower the fat and up the carbs? I'm thinking yes, yeah. but I, you know what I need? I need five to 10 guys that are on steroids, 
more or less taking the same thing, and then we do a protocol for them and yeah. we see what happens. Because I, I don't know. Well, it's like we said before, where we got so much nutritional information from the bodybuilding community before. Here's the thing, you get, if you remove the guys, that the few guys that don't fucking know what they're talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean, your yes. bro guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're just like, all right. Yeah. Delete, the, delete the, uh, the extremes. Yeah. In general, that group of people, you know, the bodybuilding community has just a, a wealth of knowledge on everything from drugs to nutrition to, sure. yeah. to everything. And so when you get to the ones in there that, that actually know what they're doing, mm -hmm. like those are, I mean, that's as valuable of a source is you're going totally. to find for any information By because, far. because they actually they have done and craft. seen hundreds yes. of people. Because they mastered of their craft. Because yeah. yeah. their center is far more knowledgeable than anybody else extreme, really, yeah. on that. Because they've done so much. Yeah. But, but just as in the nutrition industry, we are not studying the nervous system and the nutrition together. Correct. Right? So, like, we don't know, like, all those studies about that's how you synthesize protein were done on a guy on one day. Okay. But again, that requires you to be in parasympathetic all day. So let's take someone. So do you want to really, to really test this? Okay, we take someone. We, make, we, stay, we keep him, not sure how, but we keep him in parasympathetic for 60 days in a row. And then we'll see how he reacts to uh, co uh, conception of chicken. But I bet you he would commit suicide before the end of 60 days. There's no fucking way your system can take that. Yeah. It, does, it doesn't work like that. So all those studies were done at such a small time frame. Like, oh, we did it for a day or two days or whatever, I'm like, yeah, but you didn't control the nervous system. Uh, you didn't check on the nervous system was in sympathetic, parasympathetic. Is the study stressing the guy or not? Like, there's so much stuff we are not testing. With all the drugs and everything, we all based our knowledge, but without taking the effects on the drug on the nervous system. So we don't know how this works. So they're all doing it as it works, but if you go, they're all high carbs, low fat. Mm -hmm. Most of them. I'm thinking it's because the drugs they take basically put them toward the sympathetic side, yeah. so they need more carbs. There's some guys Educated out there. Educated guess again, I'm yeah. not sure. But and there's some guys out there offhand, like Ben Pakulski. I would love to talk one. to him. Yeah, if anyone, talk to Ben. Please. please. But he's a I guy, he's a guy who, guy. since he got out, not out, out, but since yeah. he is not competing, yeah. uh, he says so often that really about the importance of your nervous system and your digestion and all yeah. that stuff. Um, limiting he was like guys are always taking too much drugs they're always eating more than they should yeah and he and he, he said you don't know people don't understand how little you really need to eat yeah. <laughs> like like that it's uh, not what that's what we've seen exactly by the way how many how much cal people need to know this how much calories are you on right now i am still probably at three thousand and not more and I no more imagine. than that yeah and you weigh 315 140 yeah. kilos whatever it is kilos, yeah. 140 kilos and you've been there for how long over a month over sure. a month. At 3,000 calories, you've been right. staying there for over a month now. Yeah. I'm at basically probably below that or probably at mm -hmm. 2,500 calories and I'm 220 for three months now yeah. and I'm starting to creep back up. Yeah. Just, yeah. So, by the way, people need to know that you don't need to, like guys that weigh 75 kilos and need, think they need 4,000 calories a day or girls that weigh 65 kilos and think they need mm -hmm. 3,000 calories a day, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. And especially That's for, for those people eating is so much work then to try to... The organs get so, so tired. Your yeah. nervous system is getting so taxed mm -hmm. and you're mixing the rice and the protein, which means you're not getting the protein anyway. So all so that you have full to, feeling that yeah. you're tired of dealing with, you're just making it worse. And you have to evacuate that. Like your yeah. organs get exhausted from that. Yeah. Right? It's so much work to digest and we don't need that much food. I'm glad he said it because we don't, we eat way too much and regular people are there, your crossfitters and everything, you eat way more than you mm -hmm. think you need. I know there's a number of people that build their business and you don't eat enough. That's not true. Like yeah. you, you, you're just not in tune with your nervous system the way you should. That's the yeah. problem. You probably don't get enough protein because you're not synthesized. You're not digesting enough protein. Yeah. That I would agree with. Yeah. But I don't think the problem is upping the ingestion. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is up the digestion process, yeah. not the ingestion process. Because especially, it, I, I, I liken that to, you know, like, all right, so let's just sort out what you're eating and when and the nervous system side of things yep. if someone came in. And I will say, all right, so now what I want you to do, let, let's get a baseline where you're able to maintain what you're at right now, your training, leanness, whatever it is. Happiness. With the least amount of input as possible, 80-20, right in the middle of that yep. curve, right? And so, so then we find out that what's the easiest thing that works. And then 
we can start pushing it forward. And not push it with fats, exactly. not with the extreme. Exactly, and it's just yeah. like, uh, it's the same thing when if you talk about uh, if somebody wants to gain muscle. Yeah. It is in their best interest to actually start as lean as possible. Yeah. So be as lean as you can, and then you can start getting muscle, because there will be some fat is going to put on it. And, water and the leaner right. you are, it's easier to build muscle anyways, mm -hmm. you know, the ratio is going to be better. And it's the same thing now and I look at I look at food with people. It's like, "All right, so if you want to go up or down, what we got to do is find a way to make it right now as easy as it can be for you." Yeah. Cuz then we start moving it around a little bit and then it's fine. But if we're in this chaotic fucking world where what you're eating right now is hard work, I can't just give you more of that. Yeah. Or, or Fuck. You know, yeah. You know, it's only going to make it worse. And and again, to me, it always comes down to behavior. Like yeah. if you, it's not about changing the food. It's about changing the behavior. Yeah. Like this is a podcast we'll do, uh, where I want to explain the, basically what the enteric, so the, the enteric nervous stem is the nervous stem that, you know, it's the gut, mm -hmm. right? The gut flora with the, uh, all the, all the stuff that is being produced there, I think is, has to do more with controlling behavior than it has to do food. Yeah. I think this, uh, the intake system is behavior first, food second. Yeah. And I think we have changed that, where we think food first, behavior second, and I think that's what the problem is. We don't need nearly as much food as we think we do. And we've seen that in the autoregulation groups, yeah. and here's, where so everybody's okay. eating less now. For sure. Now, here's some exact numbers. When I tried to gain size like before yep. competition, I would take 12 to 14 weeks. And in that 14 weeks, I would get up in the morning, my breakfast would be eight to 10 eggs, two to three uh, cups of mm -hmm. hash brown shredded potatoes, um, and then probably like seven or eight slices of bacon. Then This was at like 7 a.m. Yeah. By 9 a.m., I'm eating 10 ounces of steak, three cups of rice. By 11 a.m., I'm eating 10 ounces of steak, really? three cups of rice. By 2 p.m., 10 ounces of steak, three cups of rice. Then I train about four, I don't eat before that, and then yeah. right again, right about six o'clock, then it's another 10 ounces of meat, any meat really, and then rice. And there's vegetables in with it yeah. somewhere, but even then, because I had those two macros I needed to hit, I didn't worry yeah. a lot about my micronutrients because there wasn't any yeah. fucking room. Yes. And I was so miserable all day. And I was working a, like a real job. So I'd be in like my work van while somebody, I'd be on a service call, and I'd jump outside to like get something, and I'm just like, oh fuck. But I, you know, that worked. I was able to put on size, and 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 all of that's fine. But at the end of all of it, I was fucking miserable. Oh, and then I would get in the evening. Then I would eat a, a pint of cottage cheese, a half a gallon of chocolate milk, or not chocolate milk, a uh, whole milk. And this is every single day, and this is without exception for 12 to 14 weeks. So nobody can talk to me about being, you know what I mean? Like, you don't yeah. understand how miserable that is all day, every day for fucking months. And now, I'm leaner, uh, almost as strong now, for, in almost every lift now as I was yeah. then. I'm only, I'm about 15 kilos lighter, Yeah. Uh, but I'm maintaining pounds, it, and yeah. I am eating basically less than half of the calories yeah, less than for half, sure. Yeah. You're probably around the you third know, of what you yeah. used to have, yeah. Yeah, but the difference is, all the, what, what we're not talking about when we talk about this is actually something I want to talk sh about with Coffee Girl too, is the impact on your life. <laughs> I'm not miserable all day long anymore. And by the way, I'm okay. sure the wife and the kid loved you during those 12 weeks. So did everybody around you at work. You've not, yeah, you know, you, well, you even know what it was like. I'd be at seminars yeah. with you and I'd be like, uh, yeah, I don't know, like, I gotta fucking eat now. Yeah. So like, I'm sure this then, part's neat, but yeah. I need to find a microwave. Yeah, uh, like, like yeah. yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, like you, oh man. It's like, uh, <laughs> th there has to be a term for PMS with food. <laughs> FMS. <laughs> Something it's, uh, we have to come with a term. Because hang being food hangry does not do it justice. Oh, hangry is not enough. No. Yeah, there has to be a, a name for that. I remember one time. I like FMS. We were going to, uh, we were in Vienna actually. This was in June, so I was still mm. eating that diet. Yeah. Like I was had just started eating a ton again. Yeah, to I get remember because you were explaining to me. Yeah. And so we go into fucking, we go into Vienna one time and uh, and MJ, MJ mm -hmm. edits all the video yeah. and stuff and films everything for us. He takes us in, he's driving. He's like, oh, I know this, there's a sweet burger spot. And so we're going and, and he's right. It was a burger spot that he had been to that yeah. he liked, he liked the burgers there. He didn't remember because it wasn't a big deal to him. But as we pull up and we get there, and it's like I'm fucking and in like a blind rage of hunger at this point. And then we get in, 
in this vegan place. <laughs> Yes. And I'm just like, and I'm like, ah, uh, what am I supposed to do with this? I, I don't know what to do. And, and then he, he says, he says, well, they do have a pretty good soy burger and it's pretty big. And then I go off in, in this restaurant. Soy? You want me to eat fucking soy? Are you fucking, you know, in this whole rant. And we get done and I look across the street and there was this place that had like the head of a cow outside, like the whole head. And, and, I, and I, I, I was, so I was like, I'm going to go over there. <laughs> And, and that's where I'm gonna eat. And so I went over there, and I got done eating, and I was, and then afterwards I was like, "All right, I'm sorry, that was a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> I went a little too far." <laughs> yeah, but all right, we all been there with training too, though. Mm -hmm. Like we need, okay, that'll be the next episode where we need to talk about this, guys. Like, okay, so do you think those sac sacrifices? Now that you know better, do you think those sacrifices are necessary for performance? Absolutely not. No. We all been there. Like knowing what I know now, I'm like. Why did I put myself, like, we have to be very careful with this. had I done it differently, not only would I have felt you would have been better. better the yep. whole time, I would have been better, but I also would have not been such a dick some of those times. Because there's just some times yeah. where it's like, training, I've been well, there. and then, and because it's also, it's really stressful in your body. You know, I, I kept pretty close check mm -hmm. because yep. of all the carbs and yep. all of the food, yep. and, and, and I wasn't sleeping well. To where I was, I was sleeping I eight hours every yeah. night, yeah. and then I would also have to sleep about two hours every afternoon. I would have to nap. Yeah. It's the only way I could get through the day. But my sleep was shit. Yeah. By the way, so let's talk pure performance because too many times they think we talk about performance like it's either you're going to do things our way, yeah, or basically and be good, or you can go perform and win competition. That's not true. Like you have to understand if your sleep is shit. You're not building the muscle you should be building. You're not performing at your best. That's mm -hmm. not true. You might pull it off for four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, but this is not sustainable. Yeah. This is such an extreme. You can't perform in the extreme. You can perform one time in the extreme, but you can't live there. So to me, it's still, it's not performance because then within one year, two years, you're out. Yeah. And it takes a lot longer than two years to master anything. Mm -hmm. Again, if it was jujitsu and that was the first two years of your life, I'd be dude, you'll never be a black belt because you won't make it. Yeah. So it's okay if your sport is two year career or three years and then you're fucked up for the next 20 years after that. If you think that's the way you want to do things, but I just don't think that's necessary. But I think too many people look at it like that, basically where they have to push the extremes. Yeah. Well, what we're finding out is actually you can do all the work in the center get better results without those crazy sacrifices yeah. to, to your entire life, by the way. Like you, I talked to some of the, those, the, the top crossfitters, especially in the women's side, and their life is crazy. Mm -hmm. This is a what I call a preteen life, where you live in the gym, where your coach who's basically daddy, uh, or you have your brothers and sisters, and then the three, class, the three classes a day that you're coaching, and the rest of the time you're not doing anything, you're not socializing, you're basically into that kind of 10-year-old living at home life where, you know, no adult life happens. That was MMA, yeah. by the way, that's not just CrossFit because MMA was the same with all the guys. And I'm like, but that's, it doesn't work like that, yeah. right? That, that's not where mastery lives. You can't sustain it. Mm -hmm. Like all extremes, it's not sustainable. I don't think you have to be in an extreme to perform yeah. because mastery, performance is mastery of something, right? I think we can do that by being, by moving the center. And I think that's what the greats have done. Mm -hmm. They very slowly but surely move their center to what is everybody else's extreme, but not to them. So yeah. for everybody there that is not a master yet, pushing the extreme is not the way. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to food, I don't think, like that's what they're doing. Like I need 4,000 calories even though I weigh 175 pounds. No, you don't. Yeah. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's an extreme. You don't need to push the extreme. That's not true. And even on the extreme side from a talent standpoint or genetic standpoint, everything. You know, look at someone like Half Thor. Yeah, uh, strong man. And <coughs> he, by the time he got, when he started working with Stan Efforting two years ago, it was really because he was doing similar to what I was doing in that we were getting, I, well, let, similar is the wrong, let's be, let's be real. I've seen the picture, I've shown the picture of yeah. you with him to Kyla. Like he was child. like, oh my God, that guy's big. I'm like, yeah, yeah. no shit. Um, but, but, but I mean, and that for me, the easiest way for me to get stronger was to get bigger. And yeah. so I just ate more and, yep. and I became more and I got and stronger. It yeah. was very, at some point he'd reach this tipping point where it's like, well, I'm only getting, and, and Stan said the same thing about Thor. He said, he got to the point where he said, I, I, I'm just getting fatter yeah. 
and I'm not getting stronger, and yeah. I don't know what to do. So they went through and did Stan's version of, of things. It's still very high carbs, and, and so I have a feeling what he does takes into account a lot of information he has about the drugs and things like yes. that. Which but I'm not good at. Yeah, so, yeah. But there still are some things that he has that I, that I do like, and that like, like walking after every time you eat, mm -hmm. which, yes. you know, when you yeah. walk after you eat, if you're going to eat a bunch of carbs, well, that's... All right, let's limit the fucking damage that we're doing by, yeah. you know what I mean? So there's, there's but something it, By the there. way, it's rice. So a lot of mm -hmm. time, it's low glycemic. If you yeah. were to walk, no, don't do that, please. Don't, don't under, I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying, like, yes. as Tyler so, was saying, so what it gets, stands, yeah. I think, is based on things that Stan knows, and it seems to have worked pretty well. So now that he's got, uh, And he he's knows far less. more than I do when it comes to people like that. Yeah, and, then, and, and so Brian Shaw's working with him again, and what Good. they said, too, was Brian messaged him after a couple of weeks and goes, dude, like, things are normal on the toilet yes. for the first time, which means they're actually, you know, they, you know everything is, is, is kind of lining up for him. But when we talk about moving the center, forward um, the nutrition side of that was a redirection for me. <laughs> but the but but last year half Thor deadlifted uh, he won the Arnold finally and the yeah. Arnold's the heaviest strongman yeah. competition. The world, the world strongman deadlifted too. 1040 yeah. some pounds mm -hmm. uh, which is a record on the elephant bar uh, I think this year he's gunning for 1100 for the 500 kilos on the elephant bar it'll yeah. beat Eddie's record but it's a different bar so that, that's yeah. all nonsense it's not the but same. Yeah. what people forget is four years ago, five years ago, he was the guy who everybody said, oh, your static strength isn't strong enough. Your static yeah. strength isn't strong Well, you're too tall. Yeah, oh, you're too tall. You're not going to put the weight on you're it. And he didn't do it yeah. by being fucking Insane. redlining yeah. all the time. You know, and, and I was fortunate enough to interview him the last two years after the Arnold. And last year after he won, he actually got a little bit emotional when we asked him, like, what's that like? up That's a lot of work. It's a big, you know what I mean? Yeah, to, it's to fi And to yeah. finally get it. Yeah. you know to win and all those things and he said he said people said that my static strength was a problem and I put in the work for yeah. the last seven years he had an Australian strength coach yep, powerlifting yep. Yep. And, and he said I just chipped away and chipped away at it until I got better and it was just a little bit at a time you know all of a sudden three years ago he's hanging with the guys on the deadlift, the best guys on the deadlift. But even and then the two squad, years ago, he comes up. And, and yeah, so now everything like is coming The in. numbers that he had yeah. on a pure powerlifting competition, he got, re by the way, he would have broken 2,500 because yeah. I've seen the squat, they didn't give it to him, but yeah. he would have been the first guy to squat whatever it was, like 900, yeah, and then he was, 900. Yeah, he was or, yeah. close. And he so, was, yeah. but, I, but I think... Yeah, he put in the work. Yeah, so I think that's... Um, but by the way, I like the sh Brian Shaw because I believe Brian Shaw... Uh, went the other way, went to an extreme with the food and, and just got fat. Back. Yeah, for sure. Because sure. he started to get injured in weird places. Like yeah. you could tell, like it was like three, four years ago, I've seen him, he came up so much bigger. And yeah. I was like, yeah, but that doesn't look like it's all muscle, mm -hmm. man. And this year it's a very different Brian. And I bet you he goes again. I think he pushed the extremes of yeah. the food. He looked to me like he pushed the extreme on the diet and just got fat. Yeah. I, I, I'm not saying that as, as yeah. an insult, but he pushed it to 440, I think, yeah. whatever it was. Well, I don't, you know, when I noticed something was wrong, it's like he wasn't first on the truck pool. Mm -hmm. Suddenly he finished fourth, and I, I think cost him the title, if I remember correctly. Yeah. I was like, ooh, yeah. like he just couldn't push, so he was bigger, but it didn't mm -hmm. seem to me that he was as good as he was before. Yeah. I think he basically pushed the extreme. And that's the thing, they push extreme for too long, it doesn't move the center. It's not your center, exactly. The center stops moving. Yeah. Exactly. You, know, you, you stay. You just push out here and here, and it's just not going to work. No, all you're going to be here from time to time. You can still use it. Yeah. But this is what's got to move. The center is is where yeah. the the mastery is. There's yeah. no question about that. And it's don't get me wrong. Like I'm not saying it's simple in any shape or form because that's what the true work is. Yeah. Where it's about controlling yourself. Yeah. That's a that's a shitload of work. And so, but I think in the industry what we do, and I think that's the greatest evil of the industry, is we take example of pe people's. Uh, that are way past us and we take uh, their center which is our extreme and try to give that to people in a temper down version but you can't temper down an extreme yeah it doesn't work like that and so instead you want to duplicate those people duplicate their behavior mm -hmm. duplicate their drive duplicate what they do during the day how yeah. passionate they are about what they do duplicate the 10 years of work that they've done that you've never seen yeah. duplicate the Kai Green who lived in the ghettos and in the stuff and then cooking every morning and then training like a, an animal and two hours mm -hmm. a day and then the mind connection everything like you want to duplicate building muscle like bodybuilders 
Can you make every single muscle of your body cramp yeah. at will? The attention to detail is the real work. The, there's no attention Quality to detail work. in yeah. the extremes. No, ex exactly. It's not what it's, it's there for. It's rough, it's chaotic, yeah. it's a raging sea. Yeah. That's not where they live. Look at Kai Green. Do you think he lives on the raging sea? On the contrary, no. Jay Cutler, those guys are the most regimented people ever. And when I get, when I talk with like strong men and powerlifters mm -hmm. and things like that, when you're talking about a single heavy rep or just yeah. you know your your max effort stuff, you know, there's some technique cues here or there, but like the moment someone's walking up to say a fucking yeah. their max weight their max. log clean and jerk, uh, I don't have the the best thing you can do for that person is to not give them any fucking advice that involves no. any of that work in the middle. Yes. They did that work. They should have so done now, that work already. And now they're going to show Whatever it. they have exactly. is what they have. So then all that person needs is a fucking loud voice in their ear and a slap on the back a and little bit of work. ammonia in the and yeah, let's no get fucking and, and then go. Yeah, crank up some metal and let's but, get crazy. But it's a very good point because now is the open. Mm -hmm. I'll be shooting this. Second yeah. week of the open is starting. Guess what? Just go fucking hard on the workout. Yeah, like they all it. have cues and strategies. I'm like, dude, the strategy is right now. You like you should have done well, or you should have. Should have, yeah. Should have, but redoing the workout three times to beat the guys at your gym. Like understanding, like this is that's not the way you win. Yeah. Maybe this year you beat the other two guys and you're happy, but don't kid yourself about then about what you're doing in order to get better at CrossFit or whatever you want. It's the work when there's no light shining that matters. Mm -hmm. And then it will show during the open. But guess what? The work was six months ago. Yeah. When you skip when you skip that training session, when you should have done that five hundred meter row, row at the end or mm -hmm. that send back carry or that you should have done when you were like, Yeah, no, like I got something to do, so I'll do it next time. Yeah. That's when you lost it, right? And it's not the strategy during the open now where and it's not about you stressing yourself to no one being an asshole to your wife or husband. Well, everybody around you for the next five weeks go, and no one knows why, by the way, because you decided you want to, to do good in the open. That's the extreme I want people to get away from. Work on moving your center, and you'll do better at the open next year anyway, except this time you'll do it without wrecking your body mm -hmm. and without being an asshole to everybody around you. And you'll be able to sleep at night and not wonder for five weeks why you're alive <laughs> and why you're doing the shit you're doing. You don't yeah. even understand yourself. Because that's what happens in the extremes yeah. is you start hating yourself. You start hating everybody around you. You can't sleep. You hate CrossFit. You hate what you do. And, and everything that you're describing, those yeah. symptoms, are also really fucking bad for your health. You know what I mean? Like all it's of that stuff. Your yeah. bad sleep. You're overeating. Your poor digestion. You're yeah. in a bad mood. Uh, Constantly. My blood pressure now is miles better. Yeah. than it was when so I was over So you there. had a strongman version, yeah. but these crossfitters have the orthorexia version of that, where they don't eat anything else but sweet potatoes and chicken mm -hmm. for like five weeks of the open because they think being three pounds leaner is going to help their gymnastics. Yeah. And so it's a still a eating disorder, just the other way. Mm -hmm. And they get as lean as they can, but only for five weeks. And then after they go pound drinks for like the next six months. And I'm like, this is so bad for your health. Yeah. And if you're doing the open, remember, right? Unless you're qualifying for the game, this is not what you're doing it for. Yeah. Right. In case you guys are wondering, I was like the 40,000th person in the Open a couple years ago. I didn't even ago. do the Open. So. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but we'll, we'll have Carla because she, she's a good crossfitter. I mean, but she went through the same phase in her life where she went through basically what is close to orthorexia and then the whole stuff. And then the problem is even before you break down is your life will. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff we need to talk about. How is life not included in performance? Right. That idea that you have to sacrifice everything in your life, including your health, for performance is not true. The best at what they do, the Kobe Bryant, the Jay Cutler, the Ronnie Coleman, they, I mean, he still fucked up his back and everything, but I remember that he's lifted heavy for basically 20 years mm -hmm. and he had a bad surgeon. But yeah. uh, the best ones done it at the top level for over 10 years. You don't do that by being extreme every year. No. Kobe Bryant is not extreme to himself. He's extreme to you because yeah. he trains like a manic, but to himself, he does the normal amount of work. Mm -hmm. He just thinks you're all lazy. We are all lazy compared exactly. to him. That's why he's, yeah. he's going to be the worst coach ever. For sure. Because to him, what he did was normal. Yeah. So he didn't do anything extreme. It's just that his normal is your extreme. That's the difference, right? So what you should aim toward, if you want to be like Kobe Bryant, is move your center to what is an extreme now. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be better. But it's not about pushing the extreme. Like at the ex and then that idea that we need to sacrifice everything is a lie. That when you need to eat that much, that you need to force yourself to eat. Like all that stuff is a lie. The 4,000 calories, I, d I disagree. It's not about ingestion of food. It's about digestion of food. I can take those 4,000 calories and give you the same amount of nutrients with 
25% less food just by making you digest better. And that's and we've been doing it. We have 100% yeah. on the, on, we're doing it on a constantly on a constant basis now. It's yeah. not about that. We have to stop with the sacrificing everything to in order to achieve performance. You can still do it without the sacrifices. I think there's a darkness almost there where people feel the need to sacrifice stuff in order to go somewhere. That's out of hatred. Yeah. That's yeah, not it's loving a, it's yourself. It's a way to make yourself a martyr a little bit. It's that like, that's know, that's, me. that's not love. That's hate. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, there's that too, right? Like, and oh, I mean, if you I, fail, I got abs, but look at how miserable I am. You know yeah. what I mean? And then if you fail, you go like, yeah, well, I was miserable and everything because yeah. you never moved your center. Because that's where the real questions are. Yeah. I, I believe like when you, st when you move your center like that, you realize how much you want it. You realize that you have to do the work and it's nighttime and there's nobody in the gym and it's just you and your sweater and your music and you still have to put good work, good quality work. There's nothing shiny. There's no... <laughs> you know, everybody's clapping behind you, slapping you on the back. You don't, yeah. you don't know. That's not what this is. This is good quality work and you have to do it and you have to do it every day and you don't get to skip that fucking 400 meter send back carry today. No, you're going to, yeah. and they know it's raining. Yeah. And you're tired. Yeah. And you want to go home. Yeah. <laughs> and you're still going to do it. That's where the success is. I still believe my thousand pound yoke carry was built on doing a send back carry, 400 meter send back carry every single day. I was training, no yeah. matter what, no matter what. And uh, did I like it? Fuck no, my back blew up for six months straight. But when did I find the internal torque? After six months, when I got angry at myself for allowing myself to feel pain during the 400 meter send back carry, because I was going to my back and just blowing up my back. But that, there's a martyr for you too. For yeah. six months, I was like, oh, my back, my back. Yeah. Then stop doing it. Yeah. Which at, after six months, I was like, dude, stop doing it. Stop blowing up your back. And so then I went like this. I was like, huh, doesn't mm -hmm. hurt anymore. That's funny. A little bit my story with a 440 back sweat. Yeah. I was like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Why am I allowing myself to be in a dark pit of depression where I cannot squat this whenever I want? So yeah. either you squat it and stop being a bitch or you stop squatting. But you can't do both, right? Because that's, that's that extreme mentality. Mm -hmm. So I know I felt through it so many times. That was my problem probably with jujitsu and all that stuff. It's not where mastery is. Mastery is pushing your center. I have a... My like favorite story on this was I had a strongman competition. It was actually like the second or third one I ever did, and one of the one of them where was there was a max deadlift. Yeah, with a straight bar, just max deadlift. And at that time, I was probably about three hundred pounds or so. So I was, you know, where, where I was, I was probably one of the two or mm -hmm. three biggest guys there. Mm -hmm. But the deadlift was not I my belt, and especially then. And as strongman, so you can get away with kind of anything. And we're talking, it was only, you know, my size, a 450 pound deadlift, 475 pound deadlift is not, no. doesn't matter. Like you- One hand? It should, should yeah, have been, yeah. you know what I mean? It just doesn't matter. And, but I, you know, it was like, whatever, I just, I, I know what I can do and I know that that's near the yeah. line, right? And it was this awful, slow, got it just to the knee and it goes down a little, but I was literally just so, embarrassed that yeah. that was the most I could but do, you it. that I literally got it up, it went down about two inches, I brought it up a little further, lost it, and it was just like, I'm not gonna not fucking hit this in front of these people. I'm the biggest fucking dude, you know what I mean? And then I got it, and after that fucking day, I just, I was like, I'm no longer going really? to be that bad. So you know what I found about people like- But I didn't go hammies? out and start by trying to pull 500 pounds yeah, the next Yeah, exactly, day. but what I found with the Hamis thing is frustration, then anger toward everybody, yeah. then anger toward yourself, then you find you have Then it. something works, <laughs> yeah. But so you got so embarrassed, so angry at yourself, yeah. you're like, I need to work, right? Yeah. So extreme is that, it's frustration, anger, everybody is there. Mm -hmm. Anger about yourself puts you on the center going, yeah. I need to fucking work. And what I did and then was, that, was I found in, obviously my holes at that point were just very technical. You know, yeah, it, cause there was just so, now? yeah, there was you're over six. Over six yeah. yeah, there you go. So, so. so but what happened was I, I couldn't, I knew it was technique issues, uh, but you didn't work. But, but I couldn't do the work. So what I did was I put together just a program in which there was lots of variation, which means I was going to have to own every position on the lift. Every inch and, of the and, lift. And yeah. I was going in, so there was, there was block pulls, there was deficit pulls, there was you know, just everything. And there was shit where it was, you know, you might have to finish with a fucking AMRAP set yeah. of something. You're getting yeah. 15 reps. You're just like, all the shit you don't want to do. But, and I'm not even joking, I was crisp over 500 pounds within like six weeks. Yeah. Uh, in another less than a year, I was over 600 pounds yeah. again, which 
still at my weight class is not good. <laughs> but it's still 600. But it's but still that, 600. But again, you put in the work. Yeah, exactly. And that's where the work had to change. And, and so it was like, no, I just got to go back now and just yeah. do the work. But, but, but I was, it was like you said, the point where I'm just so fucking mad at myself. So do you know what you change? You change your behavior. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to explain to people. It's not about the food. It's not your training. It's your behavior. Yeah. That's what needs to change because that's where the center is. It's your behavior. Mastery is mastery of yourself first. It's mastery of your own behavior. And that I want to explain where it comes from. So that'll be for the next podcast. I, I want to explain it. where mastery of behavior is and comes from. That's a very important part I figured out yesterday. It's the perfect fucking teaser to end. It will be the next podcast. All right, I got to do the boring stuff now. So. <laughs> Make sure, uh, if you want to know like more stuff, right? Yep. So we still have, Julian, you're doing the Nervous System Workshop. Uh, you missed this that already, can, but yep. there will be more. Um, nervous System Workshops. We Actually, we're going to film it and put it online. Oh, that's right. That'll so be available. It'll be, it'll so be, keep uh, your eyes out yeah, for It'll that. be for sale online. And I'm telling you guys, the first Nervous System Workshop is the coolest strong fit thing I've seen in a long time. So this one check it out. This it's one is better. Cool. I got some. I'm cool really, stuff. really excited yeah, for this one. Because the, fe- the pieces, up, that, yeah. the pieces yeah. that you're keeping were my favorite. I think I closed the loop. Yeah, and then the pieces where it wasn't as awesome it wasn't good. are now That's why we didn't really all sit. the new so, cool so you all know I didn't really sit online because I didn't like it. Yeah. Um, I, I was not um, happy with my own performance. It was not <laughs> at the quality I want to be. I was complacent. Like, Carla doesn't believe that I'm complacent. I was like, we're going back to this. You have a different center, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> For my center, it was complacency. I'm just not happy. W- um, it was okay, but I'm not happy with it. Yeah. So this one, I hope I do a better job and I got some very precise idea of what yeah. I want to do. So all that stuff though are like seminars, assessment workshops, mm-hmm. the coaches week, um, God, everything, the nutrition group, all that stuff you can find at strongfit.com. Yep. Um, there's the equi- there's links through through the equipment Equ- pages equipment, and everything. Yeah. So buy sandbags, shirts, all the stuff is there. Uh, kind of our most consistent source of outreach is yep. going to be via Instagram. So yep. that's you at StrongFit1. Strong one. One. Yep. Um, and we're on Facebook there. But the biggest thing i like you guys to dive into is our, our StrongFit community group. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's, that's where we, we put a lot of stuff there. More yeah. than, uh, I, and I think more and more, I will release more stuff into the StrongFit community, more so than in the general public, because yeah. the people there understand. And it so creates a real dialogue. And, and, they under- yeah. and they can answer each other, which means I don't have necessarily to defend the stuff because most of them already understand and then they talk to each other. And I believe you get a better... I believe in communal intelligence. Yeah. I believe Wikipedia is the way to learn, mm-hmm. right? Because it's a bunch of smart people creating articles instead of two PhDs yeah. in a room. Well, and I and think it's better like that. And in that strong fit community group, the cool thing is, is we have people that are in our mentoring program. Yeah. We have athletes, Outside, there's yeah. regular people, but yep. there's also regular people who paid attention to the stuff from the done, beginning. Yep. Who, and, have and a, who have other things yep. that they've learned and yes. offer. And then they have their own specialties. And all of a sudden now we start getting this it's cool shit to try. Yeah, so. and then they send me stuff. They tag me on stuff. Yeah. Some good lectures. Some that, that's yeah. I I want to develop that. Yeah. So check that out. Yeah. Uh, and at StrongFit One on Instagram, you can find me at Tyler F and Stone on Instagram, and uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>